and it's teaching everyone to say, we are all part of ourselves. And when he went to that war, it is the only religion that says now, that one is a part of you. There is a shariat for that. You cannot torture, it is forbidden. When you go to a war, you cannot destroy their houses of worship. You cannot kill the monks or the nuns or the priests. You cannot kill the old people. You cannot kill the young people. You cannot kill the uh, women. You cannot destroy their livestock or their fields. Are we understanding? These are the reasons why people go to war. To destroy people, to kill people, and to steal. This is the reason why people go to war. Forget about any other reason. They, want, they go to war in order to steal, to take, to kill, to rape, to plunder. And the Prophet is saying, when you go to war, don't do anything like that. And when you have prisoners, you cannot torture them. So many guidelines, so many rules that the Muslims, they're holding on very tightly. Because the aim of the Muslims, of the believers, is to make that one to become a believer, to believe. Knowing that you cannot force someone, you cannot force a belief. You think they didn't know that 1400 years ago? You cannot force someone. They have to see, they have to accept. Because now the religion is, is what the heart is. It is uh, spirituality. You cannot force that. So now, the Prophet is saying that one that you are fighting. The biggest victory is to make that one to accept the truth. This is the biggest victory. Biggest victory is not to destroy them, destroy their people, destroy their culture, destroy their language, destroy their civilization. That is not a victory. That's why you never see this happening in Islam. Yeah, they were ruling all those areas right up to China for over 1,000 years. If we are going to have that kind of same understanding of war that other nations and religions they have, everything would have been finished. You wouldn't find one church standing uh, in any of these lands from Eastern Europe all the way to Western China. India is still having Hinduism. 1,000 years they were there. Because there are guidelines, because this is being human. So it is to make that one to believe. And war, it is the very last thing that you do. And in Islam, the war, it is only to defend. Defend your rights, defend your religion, to defend the poor, to defend the oppressed. You are going somewhere, for instance. You go somewhere and you, you say, I want to run away from everywhere and I want to worship. You go somewhere and people are still trying to kill you. You say, now you have a right to defend now. And the Prophet is showing with his own lifestyle. This is not just some idea. Some people, they're writing some principles and some philosophy later, hundreds of thousands of years ago. No, during the Prophet's time, alayhi salatu wasalam. How long was he in Mecca? 13 years in Mecca. Did he ever go to war? No. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Try to win them through this way, it doesn't work. Try to win them through this way, it doesn't work. Always working. And they are always those ones who are being tortured, they are being uh, oppressed, they are being violated. The Muslims were. Still said no. And when they ran, they didn't run. That's it. Allah is saying, now make the pilgrimage. They didn't run. Allah is saying, now go to Medina. And those animals, they come to crush them. Now say, Allah said, now stand up and defend because now you are not just going to do it you're not doing it with your ego you understand what is the uh, uh, 
uh, price, what is the gravity, what is the weight of this war now? Can you understand? What are you going to do? 13 years you are putting so much care and concern over something that is not going to listen to you. And then Allah is saying, now you have the right to punish it and to kill it. You, you already have a relationship with it. You understand? But so many other uh, beliefs, they're saying those who don't believe in what you believe in, they are all animals, they will go to hell forever. Don't even go out to them. Europe was doing that for a thousand years to each other. You are not French, you are animal. You are not Italian, you are animal. Uh, even in the Italians, you are from Bologna, we are from Florence, you are animal. <laughs> Correct? You are Russian, we are... You see, always, that is... The only time they live with each other is when one completely dominate the other one. And this, you see, the sickness is being brought everywhere else. Where are you going to find where religion is ruling and it is taking over a land, yes, but it's allowing those people that is in those lands, okay, to also sit in the same table to govern. Where? It's kind of like, let's say, Americans coming here, they take over this land. And then later they say to the Native Americans, now we share the power because this is your land too. We are not going to force you. We're going to help you to build your own uh, houses, your own civilization. We are going here to help you. And we're doing that for 1,000 years and you reach to such a level of civilization that was not even there before we came. You ever see this kind of thing happening? No. <laughs> but this is happening in Islam. Over and over and over again. Mankind is still thinking, I am. I am the center. I am, not you, I. Then they got a little bit better. Some people say, I am, you are, we are opposite. Then Islam is saying, don't be dual. Be united, unity. To be ahad is not only just saying one. To be united, we are all united, meaning that we are all the same. A little bit different here and there, but we are all the same. Not just saying, we have over 1,000 years of civilization in different parts of the world to prove that. Where are you going to find this kind of mercy that the Prophet ﷺ brought. Yeah. We just found out the world just discovered a little bit of humanity. <laughs> what, 50 years ago, 60 years ago? Humanity after what? After World War I? All that period, they say, oh, we have such enlightenment, we have such modern, we have such a... Then what happened? Whole world blew up. Subhanallah. I thought you're supposed to have enlightenment and everything. Everything is going to be more peaceful, no? To have more peace, to have more at least, to have more happiness with people. But it all blew up. And then it blew up again. With what? With better weapons to kill. And then after that, they say, okay, now we have to do something. We have to agree this thing, this, this, this. They just discovered that yesterday. And what's happening now? Is it working now? No, it's not working. Whole world now, democracy is sliding back. It is losing. What is coming out? Tribalism. I'm white tribe, I am yellow tribe, I am brown tribe, 
and we hate each other, we must crush. So they didn't learn nothing what empire means. In the West, empire means I take over everyone, everything, bring it to me. In Islam, empires, we are all the same now. You, same company, better company, different management. It's okay. But better company. That is from looking at the other person, saying this one is Allah's creature too. This one has a right to belief. It is my responsibility, what we spoke about earlier. It is our responsibility how to bring that this way or this way to bring to them. Not to say, ah, this one's a... They are going to go to hell forever like that. No, that is not what the... Did the Prophet say that? No. Which awliya? Awliyas, awliyas they are sent. Common people, maybe they say, ah, these are kafirs. Even if you say these are kafirs, Those unbelievers, are you sure that they are going to die in unbelief? If you say you are sure they're going to die in unbelief and go to hell forever, you're already making a shirk. Because you say, I know, and Allah cannot change that. It's already a hidden shirk. Hmm? There are characteristics. I say, yeah, that's a dirty characteristics. Unbelief characteristics. Yeah, you may say. But Islam is teaching how t everyone to live together. When you start separating now, and you only stick to yourself now, and shaitan is saying, you are better than the rest. No one ever pulls out and stick to themselves and become very humble and say, I'm the worst one and I'm here to serve everyone. Never. Of course we're going to get to this kind of tribalism because we had nationalism. Because modern life begin with nationalism. First, it's going to be a country that you're going to put artificial borders around. And then you're going to say, it is the people in the country. And then you're going to say, which people? Then you're going to say, we are people. They are not people. They are animals. We are people. That one is animal. But they are the same people. No, they come into my country, so they are animals. How you came into this country? Those ones who believe the same way they believe, even the my people, they are the worst ones. Now they say that too. Correct? So man has lost this. <coughs> we have this shaitanic thing inside of us, every one of us. We have this egoistic thing inside every one of us. When the religion is not addressing that, that is inside of you, and how to take it out, then that religion is failing. Then that thing is called spirituality. You're doing everything correctly, but where is your heart? What is in your heart? And what is Allah and His Prophet saying how your heart should be? This is what Jesus came, Isa alayhi salam came. Everyone is doing everything properly, but what is in your heart? In your heart there is arrogance, it is wrong. In your heart there is anger, to, it is wrong. Even if you're doing everything properly, you cannot have those qualities. And if you don't have those qualities as a religion, you don't have those qualities as a people, you don't have those qualities as a nation to sit back and to take accounting. What's going to happen now? You become more and more into like an idol, sealed like a rock, like a stone, worshipping only to yourself. We have that art, correct? Where individually we are thinking. You think Islam is an individual religion? No, it's not an individual religion. It is a world religion. It is for individual, it is for communities, it is for countries, it is for civilizations, it is for the whole world. Now, this Barat, for instance, where Muslims, believers are supposed to think and understand what they have done. If you have that kind of understanding really strong, you think the whole community is not going to have that understanding? If individually you have that, community is not going to look as a community, what have I done wrong? 
What can I do better? If a community has that, you think the whole nation is not going to have that? It is already part of your culture to think we must sit back and review everything. Before you move forward, you have to step back and review everything. Now, you think the whole country doesn't have that? The whole empire doesn't have that? Every time the heart tries to open, the heart tries to open, something seals it. If we let it, it becomes sealed more and more. Allah is close. Allah is closer to us than our jugular vein. Is Allah saying, I'm closer to you, to the jugular vein, only to Muslims' jugular vein? Hmm? Or Jewish jugular vein? Or Christian jugular vein? Or white people jugular vein? Or black people? No, he's saying all of mankind, believers and unbelievers. I say, Allah is saying, I'm closer to you than a jugular vein. And I'm whispering things into you. So Allah is close to us. Then what is the problem? Why we're not listening? Because we closed the door, we sealed it. Because we are very far away from Allah. We're pulling ourselves back. Reminder coming, we close that door. Person coming, we close that door. Inspiration coming, we close. We keep closing, 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 closing. Saying that we are okay, we are all right. So this is what happens. Then, you only have remorse. You only have guilt. You only have feelings. These are human feelings for humans, not for animals. This is their understanding. So our law, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't murder, is only for our people, not for other people, because they're not our people, they're animals. So we can lie, we can cheat, we can. There are people who believe in this. There are Jews who believe in this. There are Muslims who believe in this. Definitely there are Christians who believe in this. Is it the fault of the religions? No. The prophets who came to bring that teaching did not come to bring that teaching. But now they twist it. So saying now I am human, that one is not. Our law, our compassion, our justice, our mercy is only for us, not for them. Because they're not human. But they're people. No, 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 they're not people. Don't look at them as people. If you want to look at them as people, your heart is going to break. You're going to go crazy. So many people, uh, especially coming from this part of the world, they train you to become soldiers. <coughs> through computer games. But once... You are there on the ground and you see a person, the person is looking at you with the eye just like you. He's bleeding, he's breathing, he's a human, he is a man. And you are killing that man. So many of them, they're not prepared for this. They go crazy. They have to take drugs just to cover that up, meaning that they have to now seal it. They have to seal, they have to seal, they have to seal. And that is now making Man, not to become a man. So, how a person becomes like that, this is what we have to look. Not just to say, oh, we have to work together, we love each other, oh, everyone understands. But, there is hate there. How that hate came out. Oh, there is hate everywhere, then you're not addressing it. If someone is sick, if you are sick, you're not going to say, ah, oh, everybody is sick. You're going to take the medicine. Then you're going to say, I don't want this to happen again. So you're going to trace your steps, how I got sick, why I got sick. Correct? Doesn't matter, Eastern tradition, Western tradition, Greek, Indian. They have to trace that, how it happened. There is hate there. 
there's no conversation. They have to say, how this happened? What is it? This is the final point. Before that, there's so many steps this person took. What happened? And don't look for easy answers. Easy answers usually, they're not true so much. What happened? So once you start investigating step by step, then you know a little bit more. Then you can help to other people to prevent it. Person is sick and you say it passed. How it passed? It passed because because of what? So many times, how? Because another person is sick. Correct? Stay away from sick people. Then you have to say, this is sickness, stay away from it. This is health. Be in healthy situations. This, we have to look, we have to understand. This is what, this is spirituality. It's not to have extraordinary power, it's not to feel things and see things. This is spirituality, understanding your spirit and how the shaitan is locking up your spirit to free it. Otherwise, shaitan will take over and the shaitan will say, I am your spirit. That one, he believes is doing something good, no? Everyone, that kind of, any terrorist, they believe they're doing something good. They believe they're speaking for God, for Allah, for whatever it is. They believe that. How that happens? The shaitan has completely taken over the spirit and say that, no. Now, I am your spirit and I am your Allah. Berat is not just to stay up all night and to receive blessings. You understand? Meraj is not just to stay up all night to receive blessings. Muslims have become like that. Islam has become ritual. Nawlit, not just to, ah, just to receive blessings. You don't become better. then what good is that? What good is that staying up all night? You don't become a better human being. The prayer is supposed to make you to become a better human being, correct? The prayer makes you to do something good and to uh, forbid that is evil, to stay away from the evil. But if that prayer is not helping you, that means that you are not praying. It becomes just a robotic action. But it wasn't a robotic action because the prayer, now the namaz that was sent to the Sahaba Kiram. Did Prophet just come down first day, say everybody has to pray? Did he do that? No. Yes, let's talk about it. In fact, the prayer came when? When? After the Miraj. After the Miraj now. You understand, after 10 years, Ten years of so much pain, so much suffering, so much degradation, so much humiliation, so much loss after that ten years, then the Prophet ﷺ is giving them one big test to say, now you have to believe in the unseen. Your belief in the, in the unseen has to be according to what I'm showing you, not what you believe in. Now they have to believe in the Prophet ﷺ. All these visions and everything, now they have to believe him. They have to completely submit. Then it says, now Allah is saying, you are ready for your five prayers. Yes, that's how Sahabis became Sahabis, because their, their prayers are mi'raj. Their prayers are already mi'raj. Because they went through all of that. They didn't just pray and then expect something to happen, then that prayer, it is an ascension away from the lower worlds to the higher world. That prayer now is giving them more protection, more knowledge, more blessings, protect them against shaitan and the ego. So, for us, 
has become this prayer is separate from everything else, separate from testing your ego, separate from discipline. Prayer is separate from tasawuf, separate from submission. That time, how are you going to pray? What kind of prayer are we having? That's how our prayers are not reaching nowhere. They paid the price for the prayer. Their prayers work. What price do we pay? But they're reminding, and still they're saying, it's okay, pray, you get the blessings also. But we're not getting the full benefits. So now, Ibn Allah is saying, what good is that one who has, for example, betrayed his shaykh, or that one who has become a disobedient one? What good now? Their worship. You understand? So, we're living in Ahir Zaman. It's become very uh, strange, these kinds of talks. Every kind of dirtiness has become normal. Every kind of disobedience has become regular, boring even. And every kind of disobedience to the laws of Allah and His Prophet, it becomes like a new law now. We're talking about Muslims. Leave everyone else. Now Muslims, they have no belief. They can say, yeah, I'm a, uh, yeah, I'm a secular Muslim. Such a word, secular Muslim. Yeah, I drink, I do this, I do that, and I do so many, yeah. They dare to say things like that. Yeah, I don't think it's wrong. So, shame is gone. Prophet saying, if you don't have shame, do whatever you want. People who have shame, they don't do something. Oh, but shame is a dirty word now. Oh, I forgot. Say, don't use the word shame. Don't use the word fear. Don't use this. It's all very negative. Then what have we become? We have become persons who are like that. Don't think there is too much difference now between that one who did it and other people too. There's not too much difference. This is the thing about spirituality. We say, we look at that wrong action and we find it inside of us. You understand? How many are going to say, look at that wrong action, you find it inside of us? They will never say it. There's not too much different now. The ones who's going to go there, and to kill everyone. To another person say, well, I'm not going to kill everyone. I don't believe in killing. But I'm going to benefit and support a system that does that. But I'm not doing that, but I'm not guilty. You understand? He is doing that, but governments are doing that. Correct or no? I'm not doing it, oh, very bad. But I'm supporting a government that does it. That makes me better. So where is this talk? Where is this conversation? Where are the people that are saying, we're speaking for Allah, we're speaking for religion, we're speaking for sp to say this? pull ourselves back. Those who like, they can come. But we're not going to force, we're not going to advertise. We're just sitting here, pulling ourselves out, trying to be sincere, trying to be simple, trying to be clean and simple. We're not trying to solve the problems of this world. We're not solving, we're seeing what are the problems of this world. Islam has solved that 1400 years ago.
Prophet has shown it, the awliya Allah has shown it. And they say, when this time comes, do this, this time comes, do this, this time comes, do this. And these times is coming, we're doing this. We're, not, we're sitting here, we're not hurting no one. We're not hating no one. We just said, those ones who are doing all those wrong things, we are looking inside of ourselves that we have the same characteristics, one way or another, and we're trying to get rid of it. And we wait until Sahibu Zaman appears, inshallah. May Allah forgive me and bless you, Al-Fatiha. <laughs>